Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you today. Elizabeth Warren, new bill, de facto ban on crypto. We're going to take a look here. R3, Temino, CBDCs in the BIS. But what about Ripple? Well, we're, hang in there. We're going to show you. Stellar, Ripple, IOTA, and a trillion dollar market. We got Ripple XRP. We got T plus one settlement time. And guess what else? The FX markets. You need to see this. And how about this? From the Bermuda Triangle angle to a $27 XRP. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, it's $1.23 trillion market cap for crypto. It is off by 1.6%. Good morning, everybody. Bitcoin now $28,599.85. Ethereum is $1,850 and change. Tether market cap $81.8 billion plus, ladies and gentlemen. XRP, $0.46 cents this morning. It is off by 1.8% in the 24-hour. We'll keep an eye on it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done it, what are we looking at? We're looking at Link2, which provides the best opportunity, both for investment opportunity to get in, what it takes for you to get in, the amount of money, and being accredited. They're doing everything they can to democratize finance and bring you the best private equity opportunities on their platform. Don't believe me? Go check it out for yourself. Click the link underneath the video and you'll see Link2 itself, PolySign, Ripple's there, Dapper. We got Ledger is there, Samba Nova, and Chainalysis when it's actually not sold out. You got to get these things quick because it doesn't last long. And so, so many more upholds gone right now. But you got to watch these things. You know, you got to strike like a line in the bush. Make sure you get accredited. Fund your account. You can do it all with Link2. Click that link underneath the video. Meanwhile, Patrick McHenry said that the House expects to have a crypto bill in two months. But wait, ladies and gentlemen, there's more. Senator Elizabeth Warren is pushing a de facto ban on crypto in the United States. Take a look at this. Shout out to Jake Travinsky for this one here. He says the bill would ban the run of the mill crypto activities associated with cryptocurrency, such as staking and mining. What in the world are we talking about here? Let me just ch check this volume here one second, ladies and gentlemen, make sure this is right. Okay, so there we go. I think that is absolutely right. I thought my volume was a little too strong there. Let me see if I can just adjust it a piece. Okay, hopefully that's not too hard on your ears if you're wearing earbuds. But Senator Warren's bill would impose a de facto ban on cryptocurrency in the U or crypto in the USA, criminalizing criminalizing all sorts of legitimate activity like mining and staking while doing nothing to actually combat illicit finance. It's no surprise she's having trouble finding co-sponsors. You know, this is the danger here in Congress. You know, oh my goodness, I mean, Jay Clayton may have been the one that dropped the lawsuit on Ripple over XRP, but even he knew that you have to embrace this technology. You can't just try to ban it. It will innovate around you. How long is it going to take before we all figure that lesson out? Meanwhile, banks are figuring it out because R3's ecosystem participant Temenos here unveils CBDC developments after proving integration of its leading banking platform with multiple, multiple DLT-based CBDC technology stacks, all in collaboration with R3 harnessing power of Corda. Now, we all know Corda is obviously really, really uh, a, 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 a platform for all the customers to upload onto, and then they can have access to digital assets for settlement along with being on the Corda platform. So with that being said, Temenos working with them. If you go into this article, it talks about Temenos' relationship and what they've been working on, central banks globally, CBDC strategies. It does mention in this article that working with the BIS and CBDC projects globally, leveraging R3 as well. It goes on to say they're also exercising uh, work on top of Ethereum's uh, ERC-20 token standards and things of that nature. Does not mention RIP or XRP at all. 
all, but I want to show you this as a reminder. This is a Temenos video here. Shout out from Bank XRP back in the day putting this up. Temenos T24, ripple right in the middle of it all. So don't get lost on whether you see it written in there or not. We know that there's a relationship. Now, how deeply it is still involved today, well, we, we're retail investors. We don't get to know that. But <laughs> that's where speculation and investment comes in. You got to make up your own mind. I can't do it for everybody. I know where I'm at, and I'm not encouraging you to do anything other than to pursue your own information and figure it out on your own whether you think it's right for you. So... $1.4 trillion asset manager Franklin o on chain U.S. government money fund FOBXX is the first U.S. registered mutual fund to use a public blockchain to execute transactions and record share ownership. But it's not just Stellar. Ripple, IOTA are in the same boat to conquer trillion dollar market with SWIFT under the ISO 20022 regulation. If you look at this very quickly here, it says here, Ripple IOTA offers solutions that could serve untapped industry should all networks come together and meet the needs of the demographics to industry. Billions of dollars could be recorded in revenue. Low value cross-border payments are the lifeblood of the global economy from international business conducted by SMEs to overseas purchases from consumers and remittance flows. These transactions have a real and tangible impact on people around the world, yet the low value payment space is often overlooked when considering the broader payment ecosystem. According to recent reports, Ripple, IOTA, and Stellar are set to work with SWIFT under the ISO 20022 regulation. Come on in. Other market infrastructures also across the uh, world, namely in the Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, known as MIBB or MBI. <laughs> And by NIBSS, yeah, I say that five times fast as surly. The Federal Reserve and the Bank of England all collectively made plans to move to ISO 20022 between the years of 2022 and 2025. Again, confirming what we know is a coexisting phase in the, is where we're at as far as Swift says in the transition from the MTMX language to the Ripple I, or, um, to the Swift ISO 20022 standardization. So thanks to Ripple's membership in the ISO 20022 membership using RippleNet customers can connect to different global financial institutions while using a single standardized API to carry out the counterparty transactions. That's what's happening, ladies and gentlemen. And a reminder from a couple years ago, a few years ago now, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau approved such as virtual companies, they said, as such as Ripple, for the use of cross-border support and transfers with the virtual currency XRP. Keep that in mind through all of this lack of clarity. Now, I showed this over the weekend, but I took out a little teeny clip of this that really started to hit and resonate, resonate with me after I did the video. And shout out to 801 for this. But this is Marianne Morrow, Chairman, CEO, and founder of the Ninth Gear uh, SIFMA, which is working on a project with the DTC and Deloitte to move markets to T plus one settlement time. And it's something that's going to be mandated. Now, I wanted to pull this out so you could see this because it's important that you catch this clip. Take a listen here. Um, it is somewhat aspirational that this is going to happen in um, the fall of 2024. It might get pushed out, but it's a great thing. And I'm keeping a keen eye on that because there is this cascading effect for other um, types of uh, issuances. When the equities market moves to T plus one, the FX market's going to need to coincide with those cycles. So it, it is market's going to need to coincide with those cycles. The FX market's going to need to coincide with those cycles. The FX market's going to need to coincide with those cycles so it, it is a good step in that direction and and it's something that is really critical to have regulators look at this to move the markets to that way to mandate it how about that right fx market is going to need to coincide with those t plus one settlement time cycles well interestingly enough the xrp ledger is the world exchange the decentralized world exchange and it actually works right this gets very exciting to me because i know that there's only a few different value protocols that can really 
say that they're suited to serve in this role. And certainly the XRP ledger is one of them. No question about it. And I find that to be very exciting for me. Now, really quickly here, will all of this fundamental news lead us to a $27 blue ocean? Well, I like that reference. XRP, well, looking at this, and I want to read this from Egg Rat Crypto. Shout out to you. It says, XRP Bermuda Triangle, which we are stuck in right down here, this little spot right here, right? It says right here, uh, this chart, Bermuda Triangle chart, is a combination of previous charts and key factors stated by himself. It says here, uh, XRP price will disappear from the Bermuda Triangle and will never be seen within the triangle. The seven arcs provide the FIB circle price targets. Equilibrium is the market clearing price that XRP should be in. Atlas line is the XRP most lose the Atlas line by all means, must lose the Atlas line by all means. Final wake up line is the door that will put XRP in the most fearful area, the Red Lake, which we see right here, right? Then he says the stratosphere is the portal that will slingshot XRP price or will block it for multi months. Blue Ocean is the place where sharks and whales will start coming to swim. And what an incredible analogy and layout he's got here for all of us. Now, this stuff helps me understand. There's no guarantee here. But he's showing you the indicators of the charts and the areas that are critical that we pay attention to. And I find that to be extremely helpful. Not financial advice from me or him or anyone else. Just my digital perspectives. I'm ready. Where's that ruling at? We need Judge Torres. Today's a great day for an SEC Ripple case ruling. I'll catch all of you on the next one.